Welcome, it's Jim here. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I'm going to continue the series of Scrum Master Scrups. This is where I share all of my failures and screw ups over the last 10 to 15 years of working at various teams and organizations, hoping that, I guess, on reflection, you may not have to go and make those same mistakes. And if you have, uh, not to feel too bad about it. The Scrum Master Screw Up that I want to share today is a time when I, I join an organization and I'm a Scrum Master. So I told the whole department that, you know, all of the teams here need to be using Scrum because Scrum doesn't work at just one team level. We don't want no local optimization. I'm talking about creating cross-functional teams. Now, because of the nature of this organization, I can't really give you a product example. So you're gonna to have to deal with one of my dodgy metaphors. Imagine you were building a Victoria sponge cake. We have the top sponge, we have the bottom sponge, we have the cream, we have the jam, we have the icing sugar. There were four or five teams and each of these teams were responsible for building an element or a part of this Victoria sponge cake. One team would make their element or their part or their component same same and pass it on to another team. They pass it on to another team, so on and so forth, whereby it would all get squished together and now you've got your final product. This is often known as component teams. These types of teams are not cross-functional teams. First thing that I did when I went in there, I saw that these teams were, you know, component teams or specialist teams. They were only making one part of the cake. And I was like, we need to reorganize. We need to restructure these teams. I need to take a person from the cream team, from the top sponge team, from the bottom sponge team, from the jam team, you get the idea and when to group them together because that's a far more effective way of working. To be fair, it was well intended and that kind of makes sense if we are trying to create a Victoria sponge cake in the most effective and efficient way. If we do take a person from each specialism and sit them in one place, we are going to go faster than four or five teams who are handing over elements or parts or components to the cake to one another where they need to squish it together. But the thing is, I assumed that the business defined value as a Victoria sponge cake. How did I know that the business may be profit from selling buckets of cream or jars of jam? I didn't because I assumed that the most important thing was to create scrum teams and with that, that meant creating cross-functional teams. So I've gone through this whole process of talking about restructuring, organizing around the work, but I never really asked the questions around what is value? What do we value here in this organization? Instead, I was blindsided by wanting to make scrum work. And in my mind, component teams or teams who only build parts or elements or specialist teams were bad. Now, I know what you might be thinking. How could you miss value or not know what value is when you're talking about restructuring? When you come in as a scrum master, things that you're learning about, the case studies you're reading, the heroes you might have in the community back then, you're thinking that teams must always be able to take an idea from concept to cash. If a team is unable to do that and they have to pass on work to someone else, it can start to become dogma. And that's how it became for me. Like, if you're a specialist team, it's unacceptable. This is not the way to do things. Let's go back to our example of the Victoria sponge cake. You know, we spoke about the elements, the top sponge, bottom sponge, cream, jam, and the icing sugar. Imagine if there was a special range of cakes that we did, more high tier, more expensive. For our Victoria sponge cakes and banoffee pie or cheesecake or strawberry gatto, can you tell I'm on a diet? We would do a special thing whereby we'd add golden chocolate sprinkles. I told you the metaphors are terrible. These golden chocolate sprinkle things would only be created by people with a specific skill set and the craft required to make this happen isn't something you can just pick up tomorrow. In, in the case whereby we have the specialists who provide these particular chocolate golden sprinkles, maybe they are providing these components or these parts as a service for all of the cakes that we make in the upper tier, more expensive cake range. A mistake that I also made was assuming that it has to be one or the other. You should only have scrum teams, have no component or specialist teams. Why not? Maybe you can have scrum teams who are cross-functional that consume some sort of service from a component or a specialist team. Working in this hybrid manner can make sense depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve. 
Finally, another mistake that I made was when I walked in and I saw there were several teams that were making what looked to be like parts of a cake and not the full complete picture or the products. My response was, well, Scrum says it's gotta be cross-functional, teams have gotta be autonomous. That is not going to really compel anybody. I would have preferred to do and would do in the future is understand what value is, map out value. Look at the time that it takes, look at the lags, look at the dysfunction, look at the impediments, look at anything getting in the way of value and play that back to the decision makers. Now, it's not about scrum or a framework or a method. This is about saying, this is what value is. Am, am I right on that? Okay, fine. I've understood an example of value. Well, this is how we're currently organizing around value. And these seem to be the things that are getting in the way. I hope that story, that scrub was useful. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. I will be posting a video each and every week on my Scrum Master Scrubs. I'm out. Thanks.